Hey everyone, we're going to be taking some notes on some simple machines. So let's set up our page for Cornell Notes. We draw a line along the side, two lines across the top, and then we have our space over here. You put our names on the top right. I'm going to put Mr. Will, and notes are going to be, so it'll be 1, 25, 21. On the top here, we're going to write simple machines. And then our essential question, our EQ, is how do we do work? with less force, which is basically what a simple machine is, but we'll get to that. So first we need to know what work is. So let's tell you, go ahead and write work and underline it, because that is a vocab word. And this is going to be basically an equation. Um, it's equal to the force exerted times the distance it's exerted over. And it's a little easier in equation form. So we have W equal to force times distance. And the unit we use for work is joules. So if I apply 10 newtons of force over 10 centimeters, then I would just multiply those two, or I think it's meters, 10 meters, let's say that. Then I would get 10 times 10, 100 joules. Yeah, so there's that. Uh, we also have the magic triangle for this, because this pretty basic equation. So let's write, should put it just over here. We have the work on top, and the force, and the distance on the bottom. So remember, if they're next to each other, you multiply. If they're above each other, you divide. So little magic triangle right there. OK, so now we know what work is. Next, we need to talk about simple machines. Simple machines. You guys are going to watch a Bill Nye on this if you haven't already. But Simple Machines is just a device that's going to, let's just say changes, that changes the direction it's an N to the direction or sorry about that or magnitude of a force. So let's go ahead and write uh, a list of a couple basic ones. So we have a lever and we have a wheel and axle. We have some pulleys inclined plane
a wedge, and a screw. So a lever is a pretty easy one to understand. Uh, if I have a teeter-totter and one person is, let's just make a little drawing. If I have someone sitting here, their force is down, but that's going to apply a force up on the person over here. So, hold on, is that even visible? Let's move it over just a little bit. So, if I push a force down, it changes the direction, because it's a simple machine, around this pivot point. So, I push down, the other side pushes up. So, it changes the direction. It can do some other things to also change the magnitude of a force, and that's definitely something using pulleys, um, or even a lever, if I, I do it correctly, like a crowbar, for example, is something that does that, or a wrench is something that kind of uses a lever and uh, a wheel and axle to, you know, multiply the force you apply on something. So that's an incline plane and stuff like that. So, Let's draw an example. So I have a picture that we'll draw. See if you guys can copy this. So I have a, a really long lever and I have this really heavy object that I want to lift. Say. 10 tons, super heavy, okay? And then I have my person over here. No, you're not supposed to use stick people. I apologize. He's got really long arms too. He's gonna push down on this. Wow, that is awful. All right, moving on. <laughs> so this guy's gonna push down. This arm, right here being so long is going to help when this person pushes down to push up on this and that's going to give them something called a mechanical advantage so if this is 10 meters and this is only one meter I actually can calculate that mechanical advantage by dividing so this side divided by this side because this is my input arm, this is what I'm pushing on, and this is the output arm, this is what I'm pushing, you know, it's pushing up on the thing I want it to push on. So it's 10 divided by 1. So my mechanical advantage here is equal to 10. So it multiplies whatever force I put in by 10. And that's huge. That's like a very big advantage there. So let's type or write in mechanical advantage. And we're going to put in parentheses MA. So mechanical advantage. How many times? the force is increased. So in this case up here, it multiplied my force 10 times. So my mechanical advantage is 10. Pretty straightforward. So now we're going to draw another picture. Hold on, I got to underline this. Mechanical advantage. All right, so let's draw another picture. So, let's say we have a circle here. This is going to be interesting. Let's say it's attached to the ceiling there. I'm going to draw another one right there, and another one right there, and another one right here. So, you guys can do that. Just copy this part. Cool. So, now. 
we have a line and it's going to pick up my object. It's a heavy object, right? Okay, so let's say we have another circle. Draw a line, draw a line, and this one goes to like a hook or something. Let's just say it's into the middle there. So as I pull on this, it's basically going to lift this thing up, which is kind of cool. So this is going to be attached to a different weight. All right, so let's say I lift this up 10 centimeters. This is going to go up another 10 centimeters. Pretty straightforward. Okay, so if I lift this... 10 centimeters. This, since there is a mechanical advantage of 2, is only going to go up 5 centimeters. But I do half the amount of work. Does that make sense? Okay, so then... Let's draw another circle here and here. Oh man, this is getting crazy. So we got a circle here and back around and back around again to the middle of this one. And this will attach to another object. So if I pull this 10 centimeters, this will only go up 3.3 .3 centimeters. And then this last one, oh man, can I do this? Okay, so I'm pulling here, just does a big circle around and around and around and stop here. And this one's connected to that, and this one's connected to that. Perfect! All right, so this goes 10 centimeters, but since it's a mechanical advantage of four, it only goes up 2.5 centimeters. Now that might not seem very helpful at all. Mechanical advantage of four, mechanical advantage of three, mechanical advantage of two, and, well, basically no mechanical advantage, but we're just going to say it's one. So these are pulleys, and pulleys are really cool. We'll have to try and set up pulleys one day. But if I pull 10 centimeters here, this goes up 10 centimeters. There's no mechanical advantage. Uh, if I pull 100 newtons, it lifts 100 newtons. So maybe I should do that. Ooh, let's do that. 100 newtons, 100 newtons. But if I do 100 newtons here, it's 200 newtons. And mechanical advantage of three, so 300 newtons and 400 newtons. So it's multiplying my force that I pull. This one is by one. This one it's multiplying by two. This one's multiplying by three. And this one's multiplying by four. So it's kind of straightforward that way, I guess. So that's mechanical advantage. Now for a lever, the arm, we divide to get our mechanical advantage. But for pulleys, we just count the number of times that uh, it turns, or even just the number of wheels, usually. Uh, but a crane might have 50 of these. And in order to lift a really heavy object, this might have to go uh, 100 meters instead of 10 centimeters to lift up an object a certain amount. But that mechanical advantage for them 
is huge because 50 of these multiplies my polling power by 50. So 100 newtons becomes 5,000 newtons. So that's a lot bigger. Uh, anyway, this is Simple Machines. A brief look at it. We're going to dig into that a little bit more when we do some of our projects. Uh, but this is it for, what page is this? Page 29. And then we could actually flip to the beginning to our table of contents. And we're going to put for page 29, simple machines. There you go. Good luck.